But um, I'm going to do an experiment right now. I have, uh, where is the bottle of sleeping pills that Otto do? Oh, here we have it right here. This is Otto J. Machala, a good friend of mine. And he has given me a bottle that he purchased. Where was this purchased? It was purchased at the Hakanyemi uh, apothecary uh, or Circum apothecary, right on the uh, bit eastwards from here. I see. And there are how many tablets in here? It says uh, about eight grams, I think. It says, oh, it says 20 grams oh, altogether. That was the larger one, yes. Yeah, that was all right. But there, it's full of it pills, full. very, very, very tiny pills. And this is arsenicum album. Ooh, that sounds deadly, doesn't it? Well, it's uh, made with arsenic, you see, and uh, that sounds deadly. I am going to, I have a glass of water here. Uh, this bottle is uh, brand new. Here are some of the pills. And the, the, uh, the dose is uh, two pills as needed, I see. Well, I don't need all of these, but there's at least uh, 20 or 30 of them here. Mmm. Well, they're very sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Let's continue on. Why not? Yes, I'm sure I have an overdose by now, but let's be sure. <laughs> I'm killing myself, and this man is laughing. Let's do it again. But I haven't got time to go through the entire bottle. Oops, I lost a pill. That's two of them. One more dose and I will be thoroughly overdosed on arsenic. Be careful. <laughs> be careful of filling the rest of the pills. I have so much sugar in me, I'll get diabetes. <laughs> All right. You might just get sweet on homeopathy. <laughs> Very true. Now, I have just taken what should be quite a fatal dose of arsenic. Mm -mm. I do love arsenic. <laughs> now let me describe to you just what homeopathy really is. This takes some concentration. <coughs> homeopathy was come up with about 400 years ago by a man named Hahnemann, who lived in Switzerland. And his idea was that there are vibrations set up in a glass of water. If you show these people a big basket full of vibrations, they wouldn't know what they look like. They don't know what the word means at all. Oh, vibrations, that's a good woo-woo word. That's modern age. Oh, yes, this is the new thing, the new age technique of vibrations. They don't know what vibrations means at all, these poor people. But the interesting thing to me is that Hahnemann came up with this idea and then did what he called provings. The way you do the proving is you well, first of all, you take one part of the original substance and you dilute it in ten parts of water, but you have to do it by tens. This is very interesting. Ten is the magic number in homeopathy. Now, I'm, this is an exact description. You may never have heard this detailed description before, but bear with me. You take one part of the active substance, whatever it is, you put it in ten parts of water, and then you have to success it. And that means shaking it up ten times this way, ten times this way, and ten times this way. That's in three dimensions, as you see. Then you take one part of that water, and you put it in ten parts of water again, and you success it again, ten times in each direction. This is a slow and very boring process, I can assure you. You keep on doing that until you reach the concentration of the medicine here. And this is put on sugar pills because it, didn't, it doesn't really matter how you administer it as long as you get it into your body, you see. And they start at a dilution of 30. The dilution of 30 means 10 to the power of 30 parts of water and one part of the original substance. Now that's well beyond Avogadro's limit, which is 10 to the 23rd. If you know what Avogadro's limit was, he was a very difficult man, apparently. And he said that if you keep diluting something down to 10 to the, to the power of 23 parts of diluent, as opposed to the original substance, that you will only have the chance of there being one molecule or atom 
of the original substance there. So by the time you get to 10 to the 24th, you have one chance in 10 of there being one molecule. I know this sounds complicated, but it's sillier than it is complicated, I can assure you. <laughs> so they like to start at a concentration of 30. Wow! Now the interesting thing to me about this is that one of the most popular homeopathic cures, as they call them, is a cure that is based on duck livers. Now this is not popular with ducks, <laughs> but if you have one duck liver, that would be enough duck liver at that dilution to make homeopathic medicines that would fill the entire solar system and then a little bit beyond. That's a lot of medicine. A lot of medicine. A big sphere with the sun at the center and the orbit of Pluto. It used to be a planet, remember? Way at the outside and a little bit more than that. That's how dilute this substance is and that is what homeopathy is all about. It sounds incredible and it is incredible. But the rule of homeopathy that will really surprise you, I hope you're ready for this, I'm glad you're all seated because you'll fall down in surprise. The more dilute it is, the stronger it is. That's incredible. The more dilute it is, the stronger it is. So if you take that one pill and put it in a glass of water and shake it up and then take just a drop of that and put it in you can get it so strong that, I mean, you'd think, well, a whole crowd of us went out on, on, the, on, a, on a plaza the, this morning and we all took a fatal dose of sleeping pills and arsenic as well. And I'm, well, I'm a little drowsy, but not all that drowsy, I assure you. I think I'm going to live to a ripe old age. I'm only 81 at the moment. I've got a long time to go, even though I do this at every one of my lectures. Now, the rule about it being stronger the more dilute it is, is so incredibly ridiculous that it is hard to believe that anyone came up with this. As a matter of fact, in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where I live, we had a very sad thing happen the other day. A gentleman who depended on homeopathic medicine died of an overdose. <laughs> he forgot to take his medicine. <laughs> By not taking it at all, he overdosed. Now, the word that appears on all these bottles and all these cartons and whatnot of homeopathic medicine, the big word is natural. Oh, that's a buzzword. That's wonderful. It's natural, so it must be good. Well, bird shit is natural. <laughs> and gravel on the ground, that's natural. But I don't eat it. I hope I don't eat it, that is. Now, Take a look at this. Here's a box of what's called cold ease. This is a homeopathic remedy. It says right here, homeopathic, right there, in white letters against black. And it says clinically proven to reduce the duration of the common cold. It's made with zinc gluconate. Zinc gluconate is an active chemical that will relieve the symptoms of the average cold. But wait a minute, is this really homeopathic? Oh, dilution is 2x. What does that mean? It means one part in 100. That's 1%, and zinc gluconate is very powerful. Oh, here is Zycam. This is a cold remedy. Get over your cold faster. Reduce the severity of cold symptoms. Melts in your mouth. And homeopathic remedy, it says right on there. This. This particular product in the United States sells for about 70% more than a legitimate bit of medicine because it's homeopathic. You see, it's avant-garde. It's very exciting. It's the new medicine. But it has zinc glucamate in it in a much higher concentration. One part in 20. 5% solution of zinc glucamate. And that does work to reduce the symptoms. Doesn't cure the cold but it is not homeopathic and they can charge 70% more for it because they say it's homeopathic. Incredible. But these are frauds, absolute frauds, and the Federal Drug Administration in the United States can't do a thing about it for a strange reason. <laughs>